Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's a really interesting problem dealing with torques, the hungry bear problem. Um, it looks more like a starving bear, but um, I'm not very good at drawing bears, so that will just have to do. But imagine here that we have a beam that is held up by a cable, and let's say that the maximum tension this cable can withstand is 200 pounds. And we have a 160-pound bear, we have a 50-pound beam, and we have a picnic basket full of goodies that the bear is after, uh, that has a mass or a weight I should say of 20 pounds and let's say the beam is 20 feet long can the bear reach the picnic basket before the cable breaks and the whole thing comes slamming down all right let's figure it out so this is a torque problem so we're going to say that the sum of all the torques about a particular tip pivot point equals to zero and uh, let's see let's call this here our pivot point right where the beam is attached to the pole and of course, if the beam can rotate like this, then uh, that's a good pivot point right there. So let's call that pivot point number one. And now let's find all the torques acting on that pivot point. So the first one, we have the uh, picnic basket, which is hanging down like this. So that's the MG. And then we need to know the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. The perpendicular distance right here would be distance one, D1. All right. The second force would be the um, weight of the beam, which acts at the center mass right there. So it would be this weight right here, which is a uh, big MG. And then the distance from the pivot point to the uh, line of action of the force, the perpendicular distance, that would be here, distance D2. All right, and again, remember that the clockwise torque like this, I consider it to be positive, counterclockwise negative, that's just by definition. You can do it the other way around, but this is fine. Now let's see what else do we have. Well, we have the bear, and let's assume that the bear is at the distance x away from the pole. And so we have the MGB of the bear. Let's see if I can figure out how to draw that right there. So there's the MG of the bear, MGB, and then the distance from the uh, pivot point to the line of action of the force would be the distance x. So we'll just keep it as x. We have one more which is the tension in the cable, which acts in this direction. And so the perpendicular distance from the, from the pivot point to the, beam, to the uh, cable right there, that would be this distance right here, and we'll call that distance three. All right, now we're ready to set up the equation. So we're going to add up all the torques, they add up to zero, so zero is equal to, let's start with the mg, which acts in such a way that the the beam would rotate in a clockwise direction, that makes it a positive torque, so we have mg times the distance, that would be d1, plus we have the weight of the beam, which also acts in this direction, so that would be big mg times the distance d2. Then we have the weight of the bear, which is a plus mgb, the weight of the bear, times the distance, in this case that would be x, which is what we're looking for, right, that's the question. Right? And then we have one more torque, which is the cable pulling in the opposite direction. That would be a minus torque, and that would be the 160 pounds. So let's just call it the tension, T, times the uh, distance, which is D3. And all that added together adds up to zero. Now, since we're looking for X, we're going to take this term and move it over to this side. So that becomes the minus mg of the bear times x so equals, and on the right side we still have mg d1 plus mg d2, that's a little mg, that's a big mg, this is now on the other side, and minus the tension of the cable times d3. Then I'm going to divide both sides by the minus mgb, minus mgb, B, like that. Okay, and uh, that now gives me the equation that solves for x. Now, if x is at least 20 feet, bear is good. If x is less than 20 feet, considerably less, then the bear is out of luck. Then the bear will not be able to reach the goodies before the cable breaks. So let's see what happens to this bear. As skinny as he is, maybe he hasn't been all that lucky in the past. All right, let's try this. So x is equal to, 
uh, mg times, and first I'm going to put in what the d1, d2, and d3 are equal to. So we have the little mg times d1, and d1 is the total length of the beam, so I'll just write L for the length of the beam, plus big mg, and d2 here would be half the length of the beam, all right, so that would be L over 2, and then we have minus the tension, and we're going to then plug in what the maximum tension is, right, times uh, d3, now d3 is this distance right here. We're going to need to set up a little triangle to figure this out. So I need some room for my little triangle. Let me put it over here. So we have this line right there, that's D3. We have the beam over here. That's the length of the beam. We have, um, hmm, doesn't quite, oh, my little alien there is uh, falling over. Uh, let's see here. Then we have the cable right here, that would be the tension of the cable, and this angle right here, theta, which is 60 degrees, is right there. So now I have a little triangle that represents this region right there, and I need to know what D3 is equal to, and this, the L looks like it's a hypotenuse, this is the opposite side to this angle right here, so I can say that D3 is equal to the hypotenuse, the length of the beam, times the sine of the angle theta, the sine of this angle right there. All right, so that's this D3 here, and of course that would be D3 right there. Okay, well, I would like to put in what D3 is equal to, so let me move this D3 over a little bit over here, and D3 then is going to be L sine theta, L times the sine of theta. There we go. Okay, now notice that on the right side, oh, I'm missing one more thing, minus the mass of the bear, or the weight of the bear, minus the mg of the bear. Can't forget that. All right, so now notice that on the right side of the equation, every term has an L in it, but since I don't have a zero on the left side, I can't get rid of that. So let's me, let me plug in all the numbers as they are. X equals little mg, that's the weight of the basket, that's 20 pounds, times the length of the beam, which is 20 feet, plus the weight of the beam, which is, hmm, where are we? Ah, here we go, 50 pounds. And half the length of the beam, which is 10 feet, minus the tension, I'm going to put in the maximum tension, which is 200 pounds, and multiply times L, which is 20 feet, and times the sine of 60 degrees. And if I remember right, the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, isn't it? All right, 0.866, we'll plug that in later. Divide the whole thing by the weight of the bear, which is 160 pounds. And there was a negative in front of that, so can't forget that. Okay, using a calculator. So we get 20 times 20, that's 400, plus 10 times 50, that's plus 500, minus 200 times 20 times the sine of 60 equals, so now I have minus 2,564 in the numerator, I divide that by minus 160, equals, and we have x is equal to 16 feet. Notice that pounds cancels out everywhere, and we're just left with feet. 16 feet. Hmm. Do you think the bear's in trouble? Can he reach to the basket from four feet away? Don't know, maybe that's why he's so skinny. All right, but that's how you do a problem like that. And let's see if I can come up with another interesting example for you.